Hello and welcome to Justice. I'm Judge Jeanine Pirro. Thanks for being with us tonight. This is a problem of the president's own making. He's been president for five and a half years. When's he going to take responsibility for something? I draw but one conclusion. Barack Obama is intentionally using the immigration crisis as an excuse to change the demographics and ultimately the electorate of this nation. The latest, a Trojan horse, adding to a long line of scandals, screw-ups, shocking stupidity, or maybe shocking shrewdness. Yes, a Trojan horse, using children to advance his political party, his agenda, and his legacy. As coyotes, human smugglers hired to bring children into the United States deliver them by the thousands with the help of Mexico, a public health danger, a law enforcement nightmare, and yet another tax burden is created courtesy of Barack Obama. Now you say, come on, these are babies. This is a humanitarian crisis. And I say, we all love babies, but most of the babies coming here are between the ages of 14 and 17. And three quarters of those 14 to 17 year olds are males. So much for that image of Border Patrol spending all their time changing diapers. And I've got more bad news for you. Gang signs located at the holding facilities entice those male teens to join MS-13, one of the most violent gangs in the world. And it's no surprise, three weeks ago, I told you what was happening. It is the Obama administration knowingly creating a public health time bomb by sending tens of thousands of illegal immigrant children across the country with potentially dangerous infectious diseases? And now reports confirm scabies, a flesh-eating mite, tuberculosis, chickenpox, lice, foot and mouth disease, strep throat, as well as sexually transmitted diseases. And here's the good news. You ready? Our most transparent administration is shipping these kids into your state and your town with no notice, under the cover of darkness, hoping you won't notice. As happened in Marietta, California. This is how it works. Each child is given a form, one easily duplicated by the way. And according to Border Patrol, they board buses and planes, the same commercial ones that you use for your travel, courtesy of, yes, your checkbook. Now, once dropped off with virtually no supervision, they walk off. Border Patrol agents and healthcare workers report there is no testing for vaccinations or tuberculosis and say they've been threatened with arrest, with arrest, if they discuss the contagious diseases. They can't even take their phones into these centers for fear that they might take a picture. So why are these kids even coming here? The president says this influx is the result of the desperation and the violence that exists in Central American countries. But do we even know if these kids are from Central America? When in 2012, the United Nations reported individuals from terror-prone Somalia were traveling to Central America to illegally enter the United States. So far this year, almost 60,000 kids have entered illegally. No country in the world would allow its border to be infiltrated by people without identification who haven't even been screened. And what is the president doing to stop this, you ask? Nothing. And who is facilitating the flow of this more than 1,700 mile trek? None other than our good neighbor, Mexico. Now, you may recall then President Felipe Calderon lecturing Congress a few years back telling us. My government does not favor the breaking of the rules. I fully respect the right of any country to enact and enforce its own laws. But then went on to say he didn't agree with the Arizona law that was just passed, to which and for which he then received a standing ovation. And guess who's shipping these kids on trains illegally in violation of our laws that they so-called respect to infiltrate our border? 
Mexico. For sure, these kids are not paying for that transportation as they ride on trains through Mexico. So who gives Mexico the right to ship them to us? Why aren't they keeping them or housing them? Why aren't they sending them back? And by the way, you go into Mexico illegally and see how fast your butt lands in jail. Now our president told us that our borders were secure as he ridiculed those who said that it wasn't. You know, they said we needed to triple the border patrol. Or now they're gonna say we need to quadruple the border patrol. Or they'll want a higher fence. Maybe they'll need a moat. Maybe they want alligators in the moat. Funny. But you really didn't expect the truth from him, did you? In 2012, it was a Barack Obama who instituted his own program that deferred de deportation for kids who entered the nation illegally as long as they went to school or joined the military. And the blame is squarely on Barack Obama because in 2011, there were 6,500 kids crossing. Then he has this program that he trumpets, and in 2013, after the program, 25,000. This year, the projection, 90,000. And next year, the projection, 145,000. That's almost a quarter of a million kids in two years, equal to the population of Orlando, Florida. And strap in, folks. Multiply that by six or eight, because now their parents can come with them. After all, these families deserve to be whole. Why? Any American parent who hands his kid off to a coyote, that human trafficker, to be taken 1,700 miles would be thrown in jail in this country for child abuse. And don't be fooled by this administration saying they're going to send them back. The average deportation time is five years. But that's only after we pay for advocates, translators, lawyers, judges, housing, food, healthcare, education, medication. And at the end, statistics tell us that 90% are released anyway. So this week, President Obama refused to go to the border to see the crisis that he created. Instead, he'd rather run off to a golf course or play pool. And in true Obama fashion, he wants four billion of our dollars to fix this. Only 2%, by the way, of which would go to close the border. And since nothing is his fault, he says that if only those Republicans in the Texas de delegation would work with him, this could be solved. With all due respect, Mr. President, you created this mess, now you fix it. You invited them in, now you solve it. Take that pen and that phone of yours and make it right. The first order of government is the protection of its people. Do you really think that the, that the drug cartels and the gangbangers and even terrorists aren't taking advantage of this migration through our wide open border? Mr. President, there's a reason we think you're the worst president in recent history. We don't trust you. We don't believe you. We don't think you're capable of leading the country. Illegally entering the United States is not a right to citizenship. And don't tell us we're heartless because we believe in the rule of law, which is the foundation upon which our country was founded. Now, how many American children won't be able to go to school because these kids, many with communicable diseases, are in our classrooms? The American people want answers from you, Mr. President. How do you know who's from Central America and who isn't? What measures are you taking to identify diseases? How many of these teens have criminal records? Are you screening them for gang tattoos and gang affiliations? What measures are you taking to make sure that these kids are not sexually assaulted? And why are you not deploying the National Guard to the Texas-Mexico border to stop what you know is coming? Why is our Border Patrol 45 miles from the border? Once they enter the country, they're accorded constitutional rights. Why aren't you kicking them back to Mexico at the border? And why aren't you closing the border? Why? Because you have no regard for the law. 
You have no regard for the American people. You don't even have regard enough to see those kids who are crossing. Kind of like that night when you went to bed during the Benghazi massacre and woke up to fire up Air Force One to go to yet another fundraiser. Yes, I draw but one conclusion. It's all a Trojan horse. You remember the Trojans, they naively accepted that gift horse? It didn't work out so well for them, did it? Let's pray it works out okay for us. With me now, Congressman Louis Gohmert at the Texas border. Congressman, how are you? Hello, Judge. What's the situation? Of course, I know I'm okay, but I'm broken hearted. Well, uh, last night was out till uh, two or so on the border, and it, uh, there was wave after wave after wave of people coming. And uh, what you see, yeah, the New York Times wrote about uh, the youngest coming across that was three years old, unaccompanied. And you and I have both referred to the unaccompanied, but judge, the truth is, no child comes unaccompanied. They pay drug cartels to bring them in. Why? Because this president has given the impression correctly that if you come, you get to stay. So we are luring children here through savage circumstances. Some of them get pulled off into sexual trafficking, which was the reason for the Wilberforce law to try to avoid that. Well, now it's been used to draw more and more into sexual trafficking, human trafficking. So they come here and immediately they are, they're expecting their rights. If you look at the $3.7 billion the president says he's gotta have, Hardly any of it is going to help the problem here on our border. It's, it's going, there's even money for leadership training in there for, uh, for the people who come in illegally. That way maybe they can create their own acorns, things like that. It is outrageous. Texas DPS is doing a tremendous job helping, supplementing, but that's not their job. But if you go Texas back to DPS, what you originally the said in your monologue. Safety. Yeah. Right, right. We got people uh, down there working hand in hand with Border Patrol. They're spending money, millions of dollars. They shouldn't have to. But in the, at the very start uh, of your monologue, fantastic. You encapsulated so much of the trouble here. But you mentioned, you know, uh, what some people have gotten outraged about and said, how dare you say the president wants to turn Texas blue? Well, how about because the tech for the president says he wants to turn Texas blue. Right. How about uh, the Democrats saying they're going to turn Texas blue? At some point, I mean, you tried as a judge, circumstantial evidence case, I have. You look at the circumstances, he's doing everything he can, including luring as many millions, so far tens, hundreds of thousands. We're told there's 300,000 in, in the uh, channel. And, and Judge, let me just mention. Hey, hang on, at, Congressman, uh, Congressman, so this Congressman, we've got a break yeah. coming up. Stay with us. We're coming right back to okay. you. And coming right, up, I'll, we're going to continue our coverage live from uh, the border of the recent crisis. And vote in tonight's INSA poll. What should we do with the thousands of children that are crossing into our country? Facebook or tweet me at Judge Janine.